Welcome everybody, my name is Mr. Llama, this is winning in 48 p.m. or less, and today I am bringing you a PVT. This is defending against the two racks all in, and my friend actually has a very tricky two racks all in that hits even earlier uh, than most. So a lot of times you will be able to kind of get your warp gate up at least, so you can warp in some units, maybe get some sentries out over there, and if you had proper scouting you'd be okay. But in terms of this two racks, it is just, it hits really quickly. You'll see what I mean. So it's pretty powerful for sure. And uh, definitely took a couple of tries for me to kind of figure out what the best strategy would be to really go at this. So, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and see how I do defend it here. I'm just going to open up. Right now I'm going to play as if I'm opening up with a one gate fast expand, and then I will discuss kind of my reasoning uh, from there. So right now I'm planning on a one gate fast expand until we scout, and then I'll kind of go into it from there. Uh, something I do want to note, though, is I think I'm going to be changing the series to called Winning with Ease, and that's simply because the Winning with 40 APM or less has been a little on and off as we go. So some games will be up at 60, other ones will be all the way down to 30 and stuff. So while I've been able to win a decent amount of them with low APM, I think it's uh, a little confusing for some players, especially when it's just something as basic as, also a note, I go 13, 15, just there. Um, so just, it it's something as basic as uh, just making units and stuff, like spamming out Zerglings has just been kind of a pain. Um, and and it's just, you know, boost the APM. And I'm trying, I was trying to say, you know, I'm doing it based on decisions per minute or like 30, 40 DPM where, you know, spamming out Lings is kind of one decision. So I make 10 Lings, that's one decision. But there's still people that are like, oh, it's not 40 APM. So I'm still going to do the exact same thing. Nothing is going to change. I'm still going to try and keep it below 40 APM. I think in this game I'm actually really close. Um, but just for the sake of some games where it gets up to like three bases, and there's a lot going on. Sometimes the APM will be a tiny bit higher. And so I just kind of want to uh, make sure that you can under um, not have any real difficulties uh, of you not understanding. So here I'm going to go ahead and get the scout. And I do like to scout around the whole base. And I see he has two racks right there. So now I'm going to change my build up. And I'm going to make it a two gate. And I'm also going to note that I am doing a two gate with gas. Um, with two gas here. And you can go for either a 1-gas or a 2-gas two 2-gate, two uh, both of which can be effective. With the 2-gas, you're going to get sentries. With the 1-gas, you're just going to get more stalkers out. So that's the difference. Um, either one's totally fine. I just happen to like going for the sentry one. So I go ahead and drop this second gate here at 20. I just chrono out a stalker right here. Um, and then I'm going to be, cro or I, don't, I don't chrono the stalker, excuse me. I use my chronos on warp gate. Because I did scout that two racks, now I'm going to chrono out, out my warp gate so I can have it out a little faster just to deal with any sort of two gate pressure or something that does apply. This isn't even saying it's an all in right now. This is just saying in the event that there's some two gate um, pressure, then I'll go ahead and be ready to deal with this. So note, I also get a tiny, tiny bit of supply locked right there. You want to throw that piling down just a second earlier. Uh, but I will be getting out my two sentries now, and I'm just going to go ahead and take control of the watchtower. And here I can see that he's pushing out with his unit. So right now it just looks like two-gate pressure to me. I'm going to be taking my expansion because I'm doing a two-gate expand. And then I could push down if necessary, whatever. But at the very least, I leave this expansion right here because I want this to be sort of a sh a uh, shield barrier protector, whatever it is. So I can just force field him out, and he can sit there and pick away. And now I see he has SCVs as well. So if he did not have these SCVs, I could probably start pushing down with the next units that come out. I'd get my warp gate. I could start pushing down with my stalkers and probably still be okay with that nexus. Um, so he does let a few up right here, and so now I'm going to have to be careful and back off a little bit, right? So I've used up all the force fields that I can. I've killed off a few SCVs, done some damage, but now it's at the point where I just need to back off, really. Uh, so I have units... Cr 
that are getting boosted out. I also have warp gate done. So now I'm going to pull all my probes back here and I'm going to move them back until I get all these units. I'm going to warp into warp gates. Also note my pylon placement so I can continue to warp in. And now I'm going to start chasing after some units right here so I can start focusing down. I mineral walk my probes over to here and then I will start attacking in at this point. Notice that my probes are able to really start hitting against his marauders right here. I block out some SCVs over there and I can actually mineral walk in again right here as I do right there and then continue to attack in. Notice I've continued to warp units in from these warp gates whenever I can. I'll, I warp in another zealot, another stalker and that right there is just going to be an easy hold. As you can see I've still come out with 15 probes. So it's 15 probes to 3 SCVs and it really puts me ahead and so from here he's basically going to have to GG out of the game. Um, because that's, you know, he's not going to be able to hold any sort of counterattack that I do produce from this. So, that's just going to be the game. I want to note how close uh, these games can be. So, even if you learn this, I'd suggest you practice it. I'd suggest you really, really um, practice... First off, just making sure your force field in there, and then pooling everything back, grouping it together. And then, what I did was I actually mineral walked to this patch right here, when his army was here and so my unit started to move up and then when he started to move right to avoid getting that I mineral walked over here so then everything moved over his army and then I could attack in and with your stalkers and stuff if you have the extra APM start focusing down his marines and his marauders uh, mainly the marines because those are going to be the big DPS uh, unit for him and then you can start hitting the marauders after that and then you could just continue to trap them and mineral walk in more and stuff like that uh, yeah, so that's simply going to be the game right there. That's going to be the hold. I ended up with 42 APM. So, hey, you know, uh, pretty darn good right there for me. And as I said, I will probably be changing the series to winning with ease in the future just to kind of alleviate the 40 APM restriction that people seem to um, not like when it's a couple APM over. Uh, and sometimes it's been a little bit more than a couple. I can agree to that. So, my name is Mr. Lama. I hope you guys learned something, and I'll see you guys in the next video.